Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to our series on Zoom ISO. Zoom ISO is an app that we created that allows you to get the individual participants of a Zoom meeting out to protocols like NDI or Siphon, and it's an app that's really production focused. So in this series we're going to show you integrating with apps like vMix and Wirecast, and we're also going to show you the breakdowns of how to export to NDI and Siphon and how to get gallery view output, screen share, active speaker, things like that. So it'll be a very comprehensive series of videos on how to do it. But in this video, we're going to focus on getting started. So we're going to show you how to launch the app, how to log in, join a meeting, and start creating some outputs. So without further ado, I'm going to switch over to the Mac, and I'm going to run the Zoom ISO app. And when you run it, you're going to get two windows. One of them is going to be a login window where you can put in your credentials to sign into your Zoom account. Um, and then the other window is the settings, and we're going to walk through each of these individually. So let's start with the Zoom window. So the Zoom window has email login and join only. Email login is where you can sign in with the information in your Zoom account. So if you have a non-SSO Zoom account, something that you created for free or something that you have uh, already that is not tied to something like sign in with Google or something like that, you can go ahead and directly put in that email address and that password. Now, if you have an SSO account, you actually still can use that account with Zoom ISO. You just have to go into your account settings and set up a password that you can manually enter when you're entering into a third-party app. And we can link a tutorial on how to do that in the description of the video. So once you have that set up and you know your account credentials, you can log in and then you can get access to meetings that you're scheduled to join or uh, that you require certain account privileges in order to be able to join. In the Join Only tab, you have the option to directly input a meeting ID, username, and password, and this will not sign you into a Zoom account. So this is beneficial when the account is open to the public and you don't need to sign in or you just want a quick way of joining a meeting that doesn't have login enforcement required. That'll be a very easy way to hop into a call. Now, on the Zoom ISO settings window, you're first brought to the outputs panel where you can select the number of outputs, the default display size, and the default resolution to use. And as we log into a meeting, we'll spend more time looking at this view. In the participants panel, you have what will be a matrix view. And again, that's most helpful to see that when logged into a call, so I'll skip over that for now. You have a log in Zoom ISO that allows you to set a certain um, verbosity level, a logging level. So you can set that to info or to warnings or errors or verbose mode. And if a support technician is talking to you, they might ask you some questions about you know, what logging level you're on and give some information about that. So you can see right now I have certain pinging information coming on from a local companion instance that's talking to the app. So I'll filter that out by just going to warnings for now and we'll only see the relevant information there. OSC settings is an area where you can set up the open sound control network information that is required in order to be able to communicate with this app via remote control. So just like Zoom OSC, it has the ability to be remote controlled by other apps or to send information to other apps to give them information about what's happening in the Zoom meeting. Um, so you can watch the videos on Zoom OSC to learn more about this area and what the configuration options are for OSC. And finally, there's a licensing tab. You can enter a Zoom ISO license as well as a Zoom OSC license. One of the things that's cool about this app is that it has modular licensing. So when you enter in a Zoom ISO product key, it removes the watermark that appears on the video feeds. When you enter a Zoom OSC Pro key, it unlocks the OSC commands that are part of Zoom OSC Pro. By default, the app will be able to use all of the Zoom OSC Essentials commands in addition to being able to do the output system. Once you enter a license key for Zoom ISO, you also get the list output from Zoom OSC, which if you do integrations with Zoom OSC, you know what that's for, and that'll be very helpful. So. Let's go back to the outputs tab and let's sign into a meeting. So you're probably used to seeing meeting URLs and they look something like this, right? They have, you know, the zoom.us and then they have some information and then a long form of the password. And what's cool about this is you can actually input this directly inside of uh, Zoom ISO if you want to sign in. So I'm going to use join only for now. So this area here next to the question mark, this is the meeting ID. So I'm going to command C to copy that. I'm going to paste that in and just delete the question mark off the end of it. At the bottom where it says PWD equals, that's the meeting password's long form, sort of encrypted form. So you can enter that directly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the long form of the password, command C to copy, and then I'm going to paste that in the password area. And I'm just going to name myself Zoom ISO, and that'll be my username. So I'm going to hit join, and I'm going to join without video. And then it's going to wait for the host to let me in. So I'm going to go ahead and admit it. Great, and now we're logged in full screen to a Zoom meeting. So I'm gonna double click to get out of full screen view so you can see side by side. I won't join audio for now. And now we're in a call with John, Jane, and Pat. And this is representative of the Zoom calls that you might be logging into. So I'll go back and I'll show all my windows again and get back to my settings pane. Let's look at custom outputs for a moment. We have the option to set a number of custom outputs. Zoom ISO will allow you to create as many as you want, maybe up to 99 or something like that on the drop down list. Um, the number of outputs you can get will vary based on the system specs that you have, that what, what 
computer are you running Zoom ISO on? And we'll talk more about that in the video about designing a system and the limitations and things like that to be aware of. But for now, as I only have three people who aren't Zoom ISO in this call, I'll go ahead and set my output number to three. That changed some things in the interface and we'll talk about that as we get there. We have the option to set a default display. Um, this can be, I have two monitors attached, so I have screen zero and screen one. I'll go ahead and set the default to screen zero. And then we have a default output size. Right now this is set to 1080p. But as you can see in the drop down list, you can go from 180p all the way up to 2160p. Now 2160p is gonna be upscaling it to be a 4K display, um, but uh, 1080 is probably as high as you're gonna reasonably go. So I'll set that to 1080 for now. Now in the main area, there's a table that's been built. And the table has outputs and different parameters that you can adjust for each row of the table. So in the participant column, you have a drop down list that contains the names of the users in the call. And when you select one of those users, you'll get their output. So I'm gonna shrink down my gallery view so that you can see what's happening behind me. So I'll keep this small, I'll put it off to the side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set my default resolution to something small like 360p. And I'll minimize my notes app. So right here, you'll see I have a bunch of floating windows. Some of them are black and one of them has John's video on it. But if I select the other users in the call, you'll see that the windows will populate. These windows contain the video feeds of the users. And they're great for being able to route them to certain displays that you could then send out to HDMI and bring it into an ATEM. But we also use them as the ability to feed protocols like NDI and Siphon. So if you draw your attention to the bottom of the app, you'll see there's an enable box for NDI and an enable box for Siphon. These will allow the users who appear in these boxes to appear as outputs to these protocols. And so if you had something like NDI Studio Monitor, you'd be able to see John, Jane, and Pat as available video feeds. Um, but you can change these participants on the fly. And again, they can be remote controlled via OSC. Uh, you can also change you know, what resolution they are individually. So if I want just John at 720p, I can grow that video by just selecting 720p there and then Zoom will put a 720 video into that box. Um, again, 720p and 1080p, they require um, certain account settings to be enabled, specifically Group HD. Sometimes you need support to enable that. Sometimes there's devices that you can use to elevate your meeting to 720p at least. So that's something to be aware of. Now, finally, we have gallery outputs, and we're going to have a whole video on gallery outputs that we can talk about. But suffice it to say that when you tick one of these boxes, you get a video feed cropped from the gallery view window at the resolution of that gallery view size. So if I enable username outputs or something like that, I'll have a username video feed of every user who appears in my gallery view automatically cropped for you in case you want to use that for compositing purposes. Going down to the participants matrix, this is an area that does mostly the same thing as the outputs tab, but you have the ability to adjust this check mark. So right here, I've just selected all of my outputs to contain the user John. And if I go back to the outputs tab, you'll see that it actually changes in the outputs panel, effect changes in the participants panel. There are basically two ways to do the same thing. So if you're more comfortable working in a matrix view, where you look at the intersection of Jane and two, for example, you put a check mark there, that means that Jane is now on output two, and I can put Pat on output three. So I can sort of adjust this matrix however I want, and this is a quick way to be able to quickly assign inputs through the user interface if you want to. Now we suspect most of you will probably use something like BitFocus Companion and the remote control to set this up, but if you'd like the option to be able to route inside of a matrix view directly within the app, that's where the participants panel will come in. You can also manage your target IDs and things like that. If you know what those are, you can, you can adjust those in this setting as well and, and use that as a filtration, uh, filtration layer for that list. So going back to the outputs area, there's a couple other settings to take a look at, um, mainly the prefix. The prefix is an area where you can name your video output feeds if you want to have it identify itself as something other than Zoom ISO on your, on your network for discovery. You have the option to be able to do that. And then you also have your display area where you can choose whether these show up on screen one or screen zero. I have two screens attached, so when I set these to screen one, they're going to disappear for you, but you can have them appear on either display. Again, the idea of Zoom ISO now is that if I were to open up something like... Um, NDI monitor, I can look at these video feeds and I can see the resolution that they're at. So let's go ahead and do that and go to file, the Mac mini, and then let's open output one. And here we have what is a 720 output feed of John. And then we can adjust that. Let's go up to 1080p. And that resolution is now bumped up to 1080p and the NDI is at 1080p as well. So we can set these, if we go down to 180p, you'll see that the video becomes a little fuzzier. Um, and you can know that that's at a lower resolution because the tile size is much smaller as well. So I'll go ahead and set that back to default, which is 360p, and then I'll set that to uh, maybe 720p. 
And then the last thing I'll do is I'll show you that we can actually have this go to a full screen output. If we select the display and we select full screen, that'll take over the entire display. In order to do that, you need to have separate spaces enabled and we'll cover all of that in a separate video. But that's something just to be aware of. So that's the basics of the user interface inside of Zoom ISO. Again, it is a, a window that is a standard Zoom client and then you can modify that and do the settings, your video devices, your audio devices, screen sharing, participation, all of that can be managed inside of the Zoom window. And then in the external settings window, the various controls to allow remote control, to route people to outputs, things like that can be managed in that area. So uh, we're going to now dive into the rest of the video series. We encourage you to check it out. We're going to be talking about NDI and Siphon and what they are, as well as how to connect this to vMix, Wirecast, QLab, Isadora, all of that stuff. So we encourage you to check out the other videos in the series. If you have any questions at any time, shoot us an email at info at liminalet.com, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.